Hi, welcome to our third season of Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today we're going to be painting something from the imagination. You know, when, when kids sit down, um, I think the, the thing that, that kids have when, when they get ready to color or their paint or they're going to create something, first they're passionate. They, they're really excited. They definitely want to make something. And they're not intimidated about a blank piece of paper or a blank canvas. They're simply going to create. And then, uh, so they rush to the table and they grab the paints or crayons or whatever they're going to use and they just start creating. That's what I'm going to do today. It's not going to be structured. There's not going to be a reference material. I'm going to paint something out of my head. And that's, that's, so I have no idea. It'll be a landscape, but I don't know really what it's going to look like. I have a, a general idea. Um, as opposed to last week, we did something very structured, a very intimate bedroom scene. I really liked the, the piece that we worked on last week because it had a lot of lost edges. So you just fade it off into the distance. You know, the center of interest was the lamp. And uh, as, for, as for, far away as it got from the light source, things just faded into black. So it was a wonderful piece, very loose piece. It was just wonderful to work on. Uh, today, we're, so this is more tonal. Today we're going to use some vibrant colors. I'm really influenced by the changing of the seasons, the fall colors are starting to come. So what's in my head right now as far as colors? Very earth tones. Um, and last night I was at an event where I won a bouquet of beautiful flowers. I should have brought them today. And those are in my head as far as colors that I'll use for the landscape. We're not going to paint the flowers tonight because that, that would be like a 10-parter show. <laughs> I don't want to bore you for that. So anyway, what, what do kids do when they get started? Um, basically, they just start drawing, they just start creating, and that's what we're going to do today. Well, there's got to be some lands, some, some structure here a little bit, but kids aren't thinking about that. They're not thinking about, oh, I've got to make a perfect composition. What, what goes through their head or what comes out of their mouths is, I'm going to paint a sky. Okay, so I'm going to paint a sky. Um, I'm not going to draw anything out first, and you know what, they, half the time the sky's not blue. They use purple. They use, you know, until they get influenced by adults, they use whatever, whatever color they feel like using. I'm going to do a yellow sky. So I'm going to grab some white and a little bit of cad yellow deep, which really looks orange. And it's going to look pretty white on the canvas, but that's how I'm going to start out. Yeah, well, it looks good. And kids talk to themselves all the way through the process. So I like this. Then they tell you about their day. You know, I don't, that's going to bug me. Of course, you know what happens when I put this up here. Half the time, if you've seen the show before, it's like a little guillotine. Okay. So that doesn't look that much different from the canvas. So I'm going to add a little more, go right into that cad yellow deep, add a little more color to that. And you know what? This brush is too tiny. I'm not going to get the job done. Use a big brush. That's better. Okay, I put it into a medium. You know, one of the things that I was talking with about with a, a friend who watches the show, she said, well, how do you know if you've never painted before? I mean, because I skip. I go, you know, like kids, you, you don't start at the beginning. They start in the middle. And um, so she said, how do you know what canvas to buy? Well, there's cotton duck and there's linen. And it's just as far as what linen is more expensive. But for me, it's, it's what texture do you prefer? And uh, I, like, I like cotton duck. And as far as you don't need to treat it, as long as it's already stretched over the frame, and right now what I'll do is I will take this off the easel, and I'll show you the back of the canvas so that you can see that it's already stretched. And if you buy something that's pre-stretched, it's going to have a gessoed coating. So you don't need to coat this yet. Uh, or ever, actually, um, in order to paint on it. Now, if you bought raw canvas, and let me see, I'm going to pick it up again. I don't know if you can tell, but the back of this is raw canvas. See how where it's stretched, it's white, and this is more of a cream color. This is where it's gessoed, and this is what the raw canvas looks like. So if it looks like this, you can tell it doesn't have anything on it, and that's what it looks like if you stretch your own. But if you buy it already stretched, you don't need to treat it, you can just start painting. Okay, so I interrupted myself in the middle of painting this sky, and I painted a little bit of yellow up there, and you know, I think I'll paint a little bit more, and then throw in some mountains. 
where we are in this climate, things turn brown about, well, <laughs> the hills are brown much of the year. And, um, but if you look at them in the distance, they sometimes look a light purple. So anything in the distance looks very, very light. Now the kids don't think that when they paint it, they simply just put down the color that feels good, and that's their mountain. And um, I want to do something in between what the kids do and give you some knowledge on why things would work to make something fade into the distance. Okay, so I have the light color. I'm going to add a little yellow ochre because the mountains are a gold color, but that's just... Now, this, <laughs> the kids would say, well, but that's just yucky. I don't like that color. So what do you do to a yucky color? Well, you make it pretty. <laughs> and so what am I going to do to make this color pretty? I'm going to add a little more yellow ochre. And I know that purple is the opposite on the coloring wheel, so I'm going to add some carbazole violet. Ooh, that makes a nice mountain distant mountain color. That's pretty. I like that. Kids are very vocal about what they like and what they don't like. <laughs> the best thing, my um, Casey came in and she was, she was drawing with a white crayon on white paper. And <laughs> she said that, she came up to me and she said, this crayon's broken. <laughs> it's not showing. It's not showing anything. And um, that was a good lesson in contrast. You've got to have contrast for things to work. Okay, so in the distance, this might be, this is too dark. It looks like there's a big difference between here, but it's not, you know, and what would the kids say? They probably wouldn't say it's too dark. They'd say, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm going to change it. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to that and make it lighter and a little bit of, a little bit more of the cad yellow deep to make it warm. The thing is you should have cool things in the distance to make things recede, but you know what? My palette is way, and my taste is just um, not cool. I like things really warm. Oh, that's, that's much better. I like that color. Yeah, that is much better. I know it looks like there's not a heck of a lot of distance, difference, especially from a distance you can't see, but this is nice. It's a little warmer, it's a little lighter. Let's just do a little crisscrossy stroke here for some mountains in the background. And this is a very tiny canvas to work on for me. But I thought, we'll try and get a whole painting done in a session. We'll see what we can do here. Got a very high horizon. I've got to vary this a little bit so it's not boring. I'm letting the paint just kind of run out on the brush. And I'm going to soften this edge a little bit. I think I need to wipe this off first. If I don't, I'll be sorry. That's better. I can make a harder line later. But to start out with, I just want a soft little line. Okay, that's something. It also, picking up that sky color actually gives a little bit of depth there in this back part of the little mountain thing. Okay, right now it just looks like two lines. <laughs> it doesn't look like a mountain. It doesn't look like anything. But I know what it is, and that's exactly what happens when you look at that, things that kids are drawing and kids are painting. Um, they're, in fact, they're indignant when you can't figure out what it is. So I, I don't. I don't try to figure out. I ask them to tell me. <laughs> so um, what am I going to do? I'm going to put some more, some more mountains in. Wipe my knife. Take this mix. Make it a little warmer, a little darker. So I added some yellow ochre to that. I like that. See, I can already tell, if you're looking at the palette, 
that this is darker, that, uh, that the degree of darkness and brightness that this is compared to this, if it works here, it's going to translate well when we move it back onto the canvas. I'm using a dirty brush. I'm using the same one that we used for those, those other mountains. I'm going to start here and kind of vary the shapes of these next set of hills. I'm not using a lot of paint for this first layer. Then again, if you watch a show, I very seldom use a lot of paint. Not unless I'm really doing a thick, impressionistic, one-sitting landscape. I'm working on some pieces right now that are four feet by six feet landscapes. And they're fun because you have to just jump all over the canvas to get, you know, to get things done. In fact, I was, I was climbing on a chair to reach part of it and my husband came in and he said, oh, she's not going to like that. You know, um, I have to, I'll have to work some sort of scaffolding to get this one done. But they're so much fun to work that big. It's, it's, it's a little interesting to, to try and switch gears and do something that's this tiny. Okay, I'm going to introduce a little more color here. A little more, just a little bit. This is a powerful color. That's why I'm not grabbing that much on the knife. I'm going to add a little bit of cad yellow deep. Maybe just a little Indian yellow to really brighten that up. Yeah, that's good. See, that's not much darker or lighter. It's brighter. There. Well, it was on the palette, but it doesn't look like it now. Okay. That means it's, it's closer because it's darker. And I'm going to go straight into, but I don't want to contaminate the color, so I'm going to go straight into some red. So I'm going to move some of this red down because I want to keep my color clean as long as I can. You have to keep things semi-tidy and, and organized. In order for it to flow right and as messy as I can get, you, there really does have to be some sort of order or some sort of logic. Like the way my palette's laid out. I start from pretty much warm colors to cool and dark to light. So it moves to the center. So the lightest stuff is in the center. Darkest stuff is on the edges. And um, now kids wouldn't call, the, you know, and I'm calling it stuff. Because <laughs> kids would not say pigment necessarily when they're five. Um, they, they, they call them paint worms. And that's kind of what they look like. <laughs> paint worms, they leave trails just like snails. And um, so <laughs> So my stuff is on the edges, and you move it in. But really, I squeeze out all the pigment from warm to cool, and also from dark to light. And if it's in the same place, I mean, there really is a method for this. If it's the same place all the time, then you always, or when you're, when you're an automatic pilot, you're always reaching in the right place for what you need. Okay. Add a little more ochre, I think, to the bottom. Again, I'm not using a lot of paint yet because I, I intend to put a lot on top of this stuff. That's nice. When you use the square format, it adds some, some interesting compositional challenges. And I'm not even sure where I'm going with that yet, which is really cool. So like the kids, I definitely have passion. I'm just going to attack the canvas. Um, I think kids usually have more of a purpose than I do at this point in the show. My purpose for doing something like this on the show is to encourage you if I can be brave enough to go up here and not know what I'm doing, and as far as not have an idea of what I'm painting, and just play, have fun, and create something, 
then I'm, I'm hoping to inspire you guys to you know, be at your home and sit at your kitchen table and, and give it a shot and, and just not worry about how it's going to come out. Just have fun doing it because I'm having fun. You will too. Okay, we've got some little hills going there. Now we need some green, some little trees, happy trees. Bob Ross used to make happy squirrels and happy trees, and I think he inspired a lot of people to paint. Okay, so this green has to be a little mellower because it's in the distance, so I'm going to add a little warmth to that. This is a new green that I'm using. I usually use sap green. The problem with sap green is it's very grainy, and, um, but it's warm. I really like the warmness of it. And it's transparent. So it's good and it's bad. When you want to do a glaze, it's nice. But when you want something that's opaque, this terra verde is really a nice color. OK, so all along with the hills, I've been doing strokes that are going across the canvas like this. Now, to give the illusion of some trees, I'm going to start varying those a little bit. Let's see if this color is going to work. You know what? It's, it's just, ugh. It's yucky. <laughs> What's yucky about it? What, what, what don't I like about this color? Um, right, it's too neutral, and it might be a little too dark for that, for that part of the painting. Uh, so I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. Neutral's actually OK. Um, I have, I have challenges with neutral because I, I like things to be, I like everything to go to da, but if everything goes to da, then nothing goes to da at all. You need to have some variation. So um, it's like music, you know, you have, you have forte and pianissimo. And uh, so I've got to make some quieter places so that the loud places can really sing. So I'm going to tone that down a little bit. That's better. And I'm going to vary my little strokes here. We're making some trees, shrubs, who cares? Bushes. We're making bushes. I have a little bit of that hill color in there, too, and that makes a nice variation. See, these are things you couldn't plan for that just make nice, happy accidents. Oh, I like, I'm liking that. Got to add a little interest, a little more of that green. I may warm that green up, just that whole big body of pigment, because it, it, it's too cool for me. But right for where it is in the painting, it might just be a good thing. OK, I don't want everything too uniform. You can't have these straight lines, because that, that's boring. And it looks stiff. I don't want a stiff painting. That's nice. Now, now, okay, the cool thing is, I start seeing this, and it's like, oh, that kind of looks like sand dunes. Maybe we could do that. I mean, that's what the kids would do, right? It's like, they start off with an idea, and they say, oh, isn't this cool? It's coming out like this, and they change gears. So it, uh, the fun thing about what we're doing tonight is I, I'm going to change gears a million times before this painting's through, and wherever it takes me is where I'm following. It's not, not that I have a set thing in my head, and that's where we're going. And um, I, I've learned so much by watching children paint. They're, they're very inspiring. OK, so I'm going to add, now I can start putting some of the darker green in. But you know what? This is too cold for me. So I'm going to add some, ooh, Indian yellow, because you know what? That's going to warm that puppy up. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. See that? You know what? You add a little bit of the Indian yellow with this terra verde, and that gives you the nice warmness of the sap green, but you also have the um, nice opacity to that. Oh, that's good. Wonderful. Now it's not yucky. OK, so I think I'm going to put a little bit of dark hair. This is warmer. It's coming more forward. More forward. It's coming forward. It might be a little too warm for where we are in the painting, but you know what? I'm just putting it down, and we'll see what happens later. If I need to tone it down later, I can.
Now, kids wouldn't be worried about, you know, what we're doing today is a combination about how kids paint and their bravado and their fearlessness and the things that we know about composition that will help you do a good painting. So what am I concerned about here? This shape here cannot be the same size as this shape or this shape or this shape. It's just going to be too boring. So this is kind of borderline. It's okay. It's just, just enough difference that that's okay. This is nice. It's a, it's a wider shape here. Now I'm going to have to either make this thing skinny or big. I don't think I want to make it big. Um, but I can't make it as wide as this. So I need to stop with this color and decide what I'm going to put in here. Well, everything's very, uh, you know, very warm. And I actually, I do need to put just a little bit of cool color in there. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add purple. Why? Because I want to. <laughs> there is no reason. There is no logical reason for doing it. It just sounds good. And that's what a kid would do. I need to have kids in my studio more often. Okay, so I'm grabbing the purple. Now I know that's too dark, so I'm going to add that with just maybe a little bit of this background heel color. Tone it down a little bit. I know that's too bright. I love the color though. Okay, let, let me add a little green to that. Maybe with my dirty brush I can get away with it. Might be a little dark, but we'll see. See, now, now what the kids would do, they're braver than me. They would say, I don't care. I like that color. I'm putting it down. So I'm, I'm hearing the little kids going, chicken. Yep. Don't worry. I'm not going to start singing super chicken again. Oh, I like that. That worked. A little bushes here. And, you know, one thing that helps... I'll, I'll cool that down just a little bit. One thing that helps add to a composition wh where you have all these really abstract shapes and it's hard to tell what anything is. And, and people need meaning. They need, even if it's an abstract, they need to have some sort of meaning in what they see in order to process it. So I'm going to add some geograph nah, ge geometric shapes so that there looks like there's been there's evidence of man somewhere um, or woman and that way it, it grounds these really organic shapes again it's about balance so let's get wild with just some oh yeah let's just get this brush and go into some straight color yeah but I have to I have to make a nice little bright thing here See, this white is too dull for me. I've got to, got to lighten that up with some uh, Indian yellow that makes a nice bright little white. Again, the white as it is is too cold for me. Oh, yeah, that's good. And you know, people's palette and, and color choices can change. I used to like things a lot cooler than I do. Okay, that's a nice little... I'm just making little marks, like, like I don't know, maybe these are a couple piles of some wood, or they could be anything, <laughs> whatever you want it to be. Okay, so there, I'm going to make two marks here. And for balance, I don't want to make two marks on the other side. That's just really boring. But I will make one big one. Just put it down like that. Oh, yeah, that's good. And I need to add a little more paint there. And it has to be grounded somehow. So, ooh, I could ground it with a little bit of blue and add a little bit of cool color in here. That would be nice. I'm going to take a thicker brush and do that. I don't know if I like that blue with that green in it, so we'll just put a little down and see. So we're going to pretend that some, see that's what kids do, they pretend things are there. And um, in their little minds, they are there. And so if they think they're there, they're there. And that's, that's how I'm going to approach this painting. 
Um, so there's some little structure that, that's like falling apart here. And I don't know if that's the right color, but that's what I put down. OK, uh, what else? Maybe, maybe <laughs> I don't have enough red in the painting. Because, <laughs> you know, I can't believe I've gone this far in the show and I have not grabbed the red yet. Well, maybe I did grab a little bit. But I mean, but this is just, this is an exercise in restraint. OK, we need red. Do we need a lot of red? Uh, yes, but I need, to, I need to really just try and be nice here. <laughs> Scale it down. OK, let's see in this man-made structure, maybe there's something going up like that. Doesn't matter what it is. It's just something different. And, um, and at the end, you know, let's say at the end here, it has something going there. And then maybe I want a little color there. And right about this time, the kids would be going, "Wee!" <laughs> They're just having fun. Yeah, like that. That's happy. OK, what else do we want to put in yellow? We'll put a little yellow in there. There is something really liberating about not worrying about the outcome. Just putting the paint down, putting some colors, and say, oh, aren't they fun together? And then trying to put something else and keep building and building and building with color relationships until you have something. Oh, that's happy. I'm thinking right around here, this, that little area is going to probably be the center of interest. Kids don't worry about the center of interest. They have an innate, they, they just know, you know what? I'm doing a painting of the dog. And this is the dog, and this is where he is, and everything is centered around the dog, and you know that it's about the dog. Oh, love that yellow. That's happy. OK. Way happy. All right, now what else do I want to put in there? That's what the kids would say. Um, we're going to brighten up the green. I mean, really throw in some neon stuff here, because this has been so tame. Oops, see, getting in the middle of the show, I start contaminating my colors. I don't think that's bright enough. I'm going to move that over, wipe my knife off, grab more of the Indian yellow, which is my favorite loud yellow. Wasn't there a screaming yellow candy bar or something? Well, that's a screaming yellow pigment. It's a great color. But you know, color is very subjective. I know that there are some color combinations that just really make me happy, and um, and uh, there are other combinations that people will say, "Oh, isn't that gorgeous together?" And I'm going, "Ew, <laughs> no." And so it, it's not bad or good. It's just certain things that you will like that other people won't. So paint for you. Make yourself happy. I like that quote. And I probably said it before um, from Catherine Hepburn's mom. And she said, if you always do what you like, at least one person is pleased. Like that. So you might as well do that with your painting. OK, now I'm going to do some more strokes up over this. That, that green that I made was just a little too loud. That's OK. Let's see, what am I going to do with this little spot here? That's where the purple needs to go. See, kids would just see that. All of a sudden, they would know that that's where the purple lives. I'm shaking this medium. And you know I can't say the name of it. So if anybody ever wants to know, just email me, and I'll tell you what kind of medium I use. What does the medium do? It helps the paint uh, move. It thins the paint down a little bit. It does help it dry faster, but that's not why I use it. I use it more to help move the paint. OK, so you know I know that this purple is going to be happy next to this orange. Ah, yes, it's happy. And then maybe something for balance there. And I'm tempted, you know, if you do a little bit here, you want to do a little bit there. And I've got to leave that alone. And put some more, put some more bushes in. And then maybe we'll put in a whole field of flowers. What was that? commercial I used to have where they said they were going to fill it with tulips. OK, that's, that's too much. So I'm going to tone that down a little. So this is too far back in the painting for me to, uh, I can't get, can't get loud yet. 
Okay, so the hills were this way. Once I started getting into bushes and mad made, <laughs> mad made things, <laughs> man made things, then I changed my strokes. I love the landscapes I do. All the landscapes I do are, tend to be, you know, as, as opposed to other things that I work on, they tend to be more about form and shape and, and um, my landscapes are always loose. I, you always see the kid in me when you see one of my landscapes. And I think the people that, that choose them appreciate that, that part of it. Okay, do we want sort of a straight line but not quite and again I'm getting back to look at it and um, I kind of like some of that white space in there so I'm just going to grab another brush it's halfway clean stick it into this white and put this in here this is a real scruffy old brush great for this kind of thing I have absolutely no control with it. it. Forces me to be loose. Oh, that's good. Looks like some more bushes are happening there. Oops. See, we'll make that little whoops into something nice. getting back to see what's happening there. Yeah, there's like this little area of sand. It could be dunes. It could be anything. You know, I could, you know, you see this, this whole thing shaking when I'm doing this. And I could actually, if you, if you put this down, it actually secures the canvas. But I feel it's too restrictive. <laughs> and um, so I'm not using it. The only time I use it is when I have a tiny canvas and it would actually fall through the holes and then, then, then it's a good idea to secure the canvas. But, uh, but if I don't have to, I want it to be loose. I like the fact that it's like a drum and you get some interaction on this thing. Awesome. I really like the sound too. I mean, we, talk, we talked about it before with its, the sound of people scraping when you get a bunch of people painting together and also if they're really into it, you know, it's like drums. It's awesome. Okay, well, what do we want here? Do we want happy little flowers? Yeah. Um, I, you know what? I'm tempted to mess with this background and I can't. I got to cover the canvas first. It's like, you know, I got to, you got to do your chores before you can go out and play. And um, so now I'm going to put in some some flowers. And yeah, it's like, ooh, I want to I wanna tone certain things down. I want to do all this stuff. And it's like, nope, nope, nope. Just cover the canvas. And you know, the other thing about kids is they don't, they don't do four or five shows to get a painting done. They don't take two or three weeks. They sit down and they paint or they draw until they're done. They don't stop until they're done. And so that's what I want to do today. Don't worry, it's only going to be an hour show. <laughs> Don't mean to make you tired there. Okay, we'll put some, we'll make maybe some glads or some little field, fields of flowers. There's some great fields of flowers in San Benito County. Well, there are in Santa Clara County too. Okay, and we must give equal time to Santa Cruz and Monterey County. <laughs> they got some awesome flowers there. Okay, now this brush was great for this kind of thing, but I need to change gears here if I want to make happy little flowers. So what am I going to pick? I'm picking a brush where I have no control. It's a tiny little brush and it has lots of, uh, it, it's well worn, but um, I'm picking it just because um, it'll give me some irregular flowers. It's a bristle brush 
And you know what? This color, I can tell right now, is probably not going to work because it's too close to what's there. We'll, we'll try some, some white, maybe do some violet in the background. And I'm just going to dab these little happy flowers. Yeah, that's good. I might need to have a base of uh, color under that for that to work. So I think what I'm going to do is scrub in. Almost like a little underpainting. Scrub in some stuff. That was a little warmer than I wanted and a little darker than I wanted. And you just say, oh well, scrub some more. I'll grab some white. And I'm going to cool that down a little bit. Some green. Very little paint on the brush. You know, in this in this season, we're going to be introducing some new things. Um, each each show, we'll start talking about how to select brushes, how to select canvas. If you've never painted before, I just want to give you tips about what to, what to buy, what to get. When I first started taking painting, it was, a, it was a toll painting class, and they were very methodical, and everything was done very scientifically, where you squirted out maybe an inch worth of this color, and you mixed it with that, and you had color recipes, and that's how everything worked. And um, that was good for me to get started, but what, uh, what I found doing it that way, if everything was all laid out for me, I didn't know how to mix color. I didn't know how to recover from mistakes. So uh, a good way to, to really learn to mix these colors, you see that this, this seems to come naturally well. My teacher would have me mix, match paint samples and mix colors till I could match paint samples. It's a really good exercise to try at home. And it's fun. There's no pressure. You just sit there and do it till you can match match the paint. That's a nice little soft uh, underpainting. Need a little more of this medium. Normally, it's on a flat surface, so it's not running all off <laughs> off the off the palette. But we do this so you can see the palette. Okay, I have to lift this up so I can get the edge of it. And you know, actually, the closer it is to you, it could be a little darker. You watch kids paint. They're just scribbling and they're talking about their day and what the dog ate and what's going on. And the coolest things happen when they do that. Really interesting brush strokes. Wow, I just, oh, this is cool. Okay, this is, this is an example. This morning I was, I was using a lot of red, imagine that. And, um, of course, I just picked up all this red because I didn't clean my easel before I brought it to the studio today. So I just picked up some red and it actually, I accidentally, whoa, see I knew it was going to do that. Um, <laughs> scary. It accidentally was picked up on my canvas. Now I'll wipe a little bit of it off, but you know what, that's one of those happy accidents where I'm not going to try to scrub it off. Let's just see what kind of interest that adds.
a little color. And then, you know, I'm not going to leave it in that one area. I'll, I'll smush it around a little. Let's see what else I've got on this that I haven't wiped off. No, nope, mostly red. Uh, I think that needs to be a little thinner. Why is it really thin? Because I'm, I'm going to be, it almost looks like a watercolor, because I'm going to be putting a lot of paint over the top of it. And I just want some color. And a little movement going on. This is great. It's like little bushes or something going on down here. This reminds me of uh, the river bottoms, San Benito River. In the fall, it's just uh, all this color. Gorgeous. Never see any water in there. It's got some really pretty bushes. No, nope, I picked up some turquoise. I don't even remember using turquoise. I don't know where that came from. Must have been the elves. Gotta watch those elves. Oh, I like that. That's interesting. See, that's what the kids would do. Oh, that's fun. Let's go with it. Oops. Picked up some more red. That was not intentional, but you know, wh whatever. Okay, so we got the canvas covered. Now I'm going to take a step back and say, okay, what's going on here? Well, you know, it's interesting because even in this really rough, raw state, there's like stuff going on and you can see these little hills and you can see stuff, stuff happening here. And what I'm going to do is uh, probably make this whole thing a field of, of flowers and just, um, yeah, we'll try some different colored flowers and see what happens. So what do I want? right up here, kind of a yellowy kind of flower. That's just not going to show up. So let's try to make it brighter. Because I'm just in the mood. Okay. I'm just dabbing on little flowers. And I'll throw some white in over that too. If I put too much of this, that's not going to be special there. Again, it's, it's the uh, variety that adds some spice. So now I'm going to tap in some white. And it can't all be the same height. It can't all be the same width. I'm just squiggling. I'm turning my brush, just patting and be beating on the canvas. You could probably see it wiggling. That whole drum thing going. And I'm working hard not to do a straight line because that looks terrible. It looks so contrived when you do that. And I think I need to add some violet in here too for some of these flowers. That would be nice. And a little bit of a little bit of a different orange, some more of that cat yellow deep. Okay, well, it looks like something's starting to happen. What's interesting that I can see very vague little little uh, fields or roads or something going on in here. I didn't try to do that. That's what's so fun. All these little things start happening. You go, wow, that's cool. Of course, I'll probably wreck it and paint over it, um, but I saw it for a minute. <laughs> if I can only leave things alone. Okay. But no. 
Let's try putting some, we need some to ground this with some greenery before I go putting in the next color. I'm just tapping this on lightly. Trying to do some irregular shapes. Kind of like that, follow that little line there. So I have some sort of rhythm going on. I've got this there, and so I'm do, fo kind of following that with this. I don't know if that'll look too contrived or not, but I'm putting it down. Okay. Uh, Definitely want to add some more of yellow, kind of a bright yellow to this. So let's actually go for the cad. I've been leaving the cad out of this, which is pretty strong little yellow. Yep, that's nice. Something different. I'm quickly putting these things in because I want to try and get the canvas covered and then see See where we're at, depending on the time. And if you're looking at the clock going, my God, how is she going to do that in that amount of time? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, I can tell you by looking at, looking at it in the distance, I need a little more balance of this. Um, I know I shouldn't be correcting anything this far away. I want to put something. This is just too much of a blob in the middle. So I'm going to add something. Uh, if I had three, so there's one, two, three. For, the, for rhythm, you need odd numbers. So I'm going to put uh, four and um, five there. And I will add that. That's better. That's awesome. Love that one that happens. <laughs> okay. Um, a little more white. Because I think this is just going to be, rather than the focus be this field of flowers here, I want everything to go up here. So this is going to be very subdued. Even for me. This is nice. This kind of works because I have, or, or it is working because I have the little underpainting that we did. So this is something you could rewind and actually create yourself. Only you'd use your own colors, whatever you want to do. I'm going to add a little more green again. Got to, got to break that up. And I think that's just a little, I'm going to tone the green down a little bit, add some violet. We don't want the same exact color everywhere. That might not have been the color I wanted, but now I'm going to try putting a little bit, seeing if that works. One good mistake that I make sometimes is uh, I'll introduce a color and I think, well, you know what? That doesn't quite work, but if I put a few here and a few there, then it'll be evenly distributed. Well, what happens is <laughs> it still doesn't work, but it's very evenly distributed. <laughs> so that's what I just did. Um, but it, it did add some interest, so I'm going back to a little more green, cool it down a little bit. That's a little too dark. Yeah. You know what? I'm warm. We're not, I am not going to the cold colors. We're getting a bigger brush because we're getting closer to us. So as we get closer, I want a bigger brush. Yeah. Um, and just get it done. Okay. Bigger brush, louder color. Woohoo! Uh, 
and I'm going to tap. We've got like three little mounds going on here. I'm going to tap some of this in. Got to break up that line. I tend to do little, I make things even. Not a good thing. It's that need to make things tidy. Okay, break that up with some weight. Yep, that's working. Yeah. Look at that flower go right over the top of that. Let's get a little louder as you get closer. Color, like sound, is louder when it's closer to you. It's all vibrations. Okay, add some more white. I'm covering the canvas first, and then I may introduce some more color. color. It just depends on how, much, how the time goes. I think I'll add a little more yellow. Yellow's good. Cad yellow, light. Shocker color. Just in case you thought I was getting too subdued. Can't have that. When you're this close to it and you're not looking back to see what it looks like, you really have no idea what's going on. And, and that can be good if you, um, and, and, it, and it could also cause some problems, but I think what's good about doing this is that I don't second guess myself. I just put the color down, have some fun. And that's what this whole lesson is about today, is putting the color down and having some fun. Not like I don't like to have fun every other time that we get together. But this is, there's no pressure here. As I get toward the bottom, it's also kind of uh, fading away. Because I really want the center of interest to be up there. Let's try some color down at the bottom. Just lift it up. Okay, now that I'm through beating it, we've got a flower, a field of flowers that's starting, starting to happen um, with the amount of time left in the show. You know what, there's just no way I could get all the flowers in that I'd like to do because it would take a lot of beat, beat, beating. But, um, but I'm really excited at what I've been able to do. Now, how can I kind of transform this thing in just maybe a minute? Um, I'm going to lighten this hill here slightly. Make that receiving further. Ooh, that was too bright. I'm going to add some straight white, nice little soft brush here to this hill here. And, um, and make that be a little more distant. It was just a little too bright for how far away it was. Even though the kids would have loved it. And I love it, and I'm a big kid. Doesn't matter how old I get. Okay, so that's good because, and I just scribbled this on. And what that did was that totally made those hills go back in the distance. Before they were popped, they were just a little, little too close. That totally made them recede. So I like that. That worked. And one other way, just in like the whole minute of the show we have, is to anchor this, a little more dark hair, a little more dark hair, in just a couple places. I don't want to do it everywhere. Oops, might have been a little too dark. And 
And yep, that's starting to that's starting to anchor it. Okay, so what do we do in an hour? In an hour, you get the sense that something is going on in this landscape. Um, you know what? I wouldn't have to do that much to it, especially from here up. It's pretty much done. There's nothing really more that needs to be said. And you know, I don't like to babble. If, it, if it's done, we can stop talking and stop painting. For here, I would add a little bit, just a little more contrast, but still leave it very loose and very expressive. So the whole thing was about getting this done in a short amount of time and not even worry about what it's going to look like or what it's going to do, just putting the paint down and going. So I hope you try this at home. And um, thanks for uh, the start of our third season of Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom.